when we go back to the Green Revolution, the Green Revolution was a technologically based transformation whose proximate outcome was transformation of agricultural productivity and farm systems. But when you think about it, the Green Revolution was successful because of its ability to engage greater economic systems and to facilitate structural transformation of the economies, including the non-agricultural part of the economies. Since the Green Revolution, we have become more complex in our agricultural systems. Food chains are longer. There are globalization effects. Staple crop prices are lower. The proportion of the consumer food dollar that goes back to the farm gate price is much smaller. There are unique components of the Feed the Future countries in which we work. So there are different youth demographics from what we saw during the Green Revolution. There are political issues. There are finance issues. There's a number of distinct issues about Feed the Future. So with the changes over time and the changes across countries, we want to ask, what are we transforming? And the basis of it is still the same. The underlying basis is we see a subsistence farming system that is based on solitary farming uh, in individual or household farms, mostly their own farm, in little connection with markets to feed themselves. And we want to change it to a system that is more market-based, where there is more interaction among agents of the economy and more opportunity for each agent to improve their incomes, to end poverty, to end their own food insecurity, and by doing so, contribute to a broader economic growth. But what are we going to, and how are we going to get there? So a little bit of it, uh, the answer to this question is, in the eye of the beholder. So what is it that the beholder believes is a successful transformation? If you believe that the overriding problem that we will face in the next 35 years is to produce enough food to feed a hungry world, then you may want to invest in a highly mechanized, large-scale commercial staple crop farming system. If you believe that the biggest sin of mankind are those who are left behind in poverty in rural areas, then you may want to transform the system into something with sustainable income generating rural communities. David Beckman from Bread for the World, Andrew Young from One Acre Fund, and Bono from U2 and One. <laughs> I hesitated to put U2 in there, but Bono from U2 and One uh, have all expressed similar sentiments about those left behind. If you believe that the greatest threat facing us today is the sixth great extinction and the loss of biodiversity, then you may want to think about ways of transforming <coughs> ecological systems to preserve biodiversity. So at a minimum, you will need ecological corridors and buffer strips within farming systems, and more likely you will want to move out of monocrop systems entirely. If you believe that the greatest threat to your children's well-being is the global climate change that we are starting to see impacts of, then you may want to transform ecologies into integrated, sustainable, rural agroforestry systems that can produce food, but a number of other ecological amenities as well. If you are alarmed that one of the biggest problems that we face today is the growth of urban slums, the inability of large cities to provide sufficient public services, the unemployment of youth in urban areas, then you may want to have a vision of planned green communities in rural areas. If you believe that gender equity is both a goal in itself and the key to unlocking agricultural and structural transformation, then you may want to change the social systems that help define the construct of gender and gender equality. If you believe that the big medical threat to us is food-based non-communicable diseases, then you may want to have a vision where we actually achieve a transition from a system of caloric undersupply to a nutritional system that has sufficient calories, not oversupply of calories, and sufficient nutrient content for all individuals. 
And there are many other systems that you can put on this list as well. Transforming employment systems, uh, transforming behavioral systems. How do you migrate from rural to urban areas? Uh, the value chain development, rural non-farm employment opportunities, and even a transformation to systems that are not based entirely on agricultural commodities, but may have some new farming opportunities such as solar farming or wind farming associated with them. So there are multiple drivers, policy levers, and indicators associated with these multiple types of and concepts of transformation. How do you define success in a complex system with a simple set of indicators? It is not by declaring victory on a single indicator, it's by trying to move a set of issues forward, maybe not achieving 100% on any issue, but advancing across a wide range.